<clears throat> wow, 9 a.m. and so much applause. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great, great pleasure and honor to be here. Thanks, Evan, also for making that possible. Um, I have had uh, attended FS Expo 2021 as a speaker online last time because there was still COVID around and we were not allowed to travel. So now this time, yeah, I have the opportunity to be here on site with you. And we are also experimenting for the first time uh, with Evan together of providing workshops on site. So this was uh, like our idea and my talk is a little bit of introducing myself to you and my project. And I will also give you a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes, what I had to do to prepare for the workshops. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, depends on what perspective, uh, the workshops are completely sold out. So that's really cool. The feedback was amazing. Um, but I still hope that those who have not been able to sign up uh, will stay here and listen and uh, probably take something uh, with them home in, in form of information and motivation to try all this uh, by yourself. Because one of the things that I would really like to bring across is the point that I believe everyone can build home cockpit components or build something for themselves to uh, improve the flight simulation experience at home. So, okay, enough of introduction. Um, just a little words about myself though. I'm Sebastian, I'm from Germany. I am the MobiFlight founder, which is an open source project. I'm the main contributor. I am also lucky that I can fly for real. I have a commercial pilot license and instrument rating and a European PPL. I'm 44 years old or young, whatever. Uh, I hold a master's degree in computer science, which also allowed me to uh, work on this project because I do like software development a lot. I am obviously an aviation and flight sim enthusiast. I started back in 2007, I believe, with, with flight simming, maybe even a little earlier. And I'm a true believer in the power of open source and bringing people together, collaborating on something, you know, together and share it with everyone else, especially for free. So MobiFlight, in a nutshell, is that 2013, I started MobiFlight as a personal project for myself with uh, really, I was like looking for something that allowed me to uh, build um, an autopilot panel for Boeing 737. And everything that I found out there was ex extremely expensive. Yeah, I was just graduated from, from, from high school, uh, from, yeah, from, from college, from university, and I didn't have like th uh, that much <laughs> access to money. And uh, everything that I found was just costing a fortune. Uh, I started a project, shared it early with other people, they liked it too, and then 2016 I decided to make it fully open source, which was like a totally new complete experience for me, um, to you know share your source code with other people. Uh, who in the room actually knows what open source really is about? Awesome, almost everyone, cool. For those who don't know, open source really allows you to take a look at the source code, you can modify it, you can share it, you can add to it, you can contribute, you can do whatever you want, uh, depending on the license, and my license is very, very uh, liberal. Uh, we have more than 3,000 active users per month using MobiFlight, simming, like running their home cockpits on MobiFlight platform. We have 6,000 plus users registered on our forum, with the trend being like that the forum actually is um, all moving over to Discord, which is a wonderful platform that I decided to bring into the MobiFlight community in 2020, I believe it was, or a little before Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 was released, and has been a huge success. We have more than 4,600 people registered there, and it's very interactive. Like you can share uh, pictures and videos and whatnot, and you can, like, collaborate, you can discuss things, you can ask questions, and we have awesome moderator team. Big shout out also to you guys. Uh, it's just amazing how this community collaborates together through this channel. So here just a slight overview of the data that I can get from all the people who are participating in our community feedback program. So you can see Moby Flight is all over the world applied in home cockpit building, which makes me extremely proud. And uh, the MobiFlight community, as I already uh, mentioned, is, has various touch points. So 
we have our source code and the documentation and also the designs like you know people share their designs when they build devices when they recreate uh, certain parts of a320s or boeing 737s we have that freely available in our repositories on github which is a great place and a great platform we have a lot of youtube tutorials and i want to take the opportunity to say thank you trevor yeah captain aka captain bob who is a huge evangelist for Moby Flight, who has a great YouTube channel, makes awesome uh, videos, uh, educational videos of how to build your own stuff. And he also plays Moby Flight, so thank you for that, for spreading the word. We have a cool platform called HubHub. HubHub is a place where the community shares presets that you can use in Moby Flight to configure your uh, aircraft, configure uh, like your assignments. Like Think about it if you have a switch and you toggle the switch, you want that something happens in the sim, right? So there has to be some kind of li like a command that is sent to the sim so that the right thing happens in your aircraft. And unfortunately, there's not really a standard to, to this. So many of the aircraft developers have some special events or whatnot that you have to, to trigger. Yeah, And the community collects all these presets and shares it through HopHop, which you can import in MobiFlight and use. So that makes it very easy to configure your um, custom assignments. I already mentioned Discord, great place. So now I've been talking a lot. I've already kind of talked about MobiFlight and uh, m some of you might have like a question mark hovering over their heads and asking, what exactly can I do with MobiFlight? And I think that's a great question. And I was on purpose like, uh, you know, dancing, you know, how do you say beating around the bush? <laughs> so, so in first place, it is really about getting rid of your mouse. Yeah, mouse is a immersion breaker. We all know that we're on final approach. We want to get land. Uh, we want to kind of get set up for everything. Now you have to look around the w in, in your cockpit. You're looking for your mouse and you bump into your joystick or whatever and you screw up everything. So Moby Flight is like this binding element in between real world hardware like switches, LEDs, uh, servo motors, stepper motors, and whatnot, and uh, bridges, you know, connects them, interfaces them with your favorite flight simulator. And when I say favorite flight simulator, it can be really any of the flight sims, like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, FSX, FS9, Prepare 3D, X-Plane. The only thing that we're not supporting at the moment is DCS, uh, but we're looking into that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, just like an overview of all the cool devices that are out of the box supported by MobiFlight. So that's LEDs, obviously, simple outputs that you can turn on and off. It could also be a relay. Uh, seven segment displays, which are fun because you can recreate radios and such things or autopilot panels. LCD displays are awesome because you can display a lot of information uh, flexibly on them. Stepper motors are great for running gauges, as well as servo motors are. Uh, always depends a little on, on the application. Some prefer the one over the other. And on the input devices side, it's actually also pretty cool, very flexible. You can have buttons and switches, you can have encoders, you can have potentiometers, uh, all connected through Arduino boards. That is using, like, MobiFlight is working with Arduino boards. And uh, you can also use it for assigning special functions to your joystick buttons, to your joystick axis, like your Honeycomb Bravo or Alpha joystick. We have special profiles for them now. It's really has, a, has, has uh, evolved uh, during the last 12 months in this area. And very new, and it's not released yet, but it's going to be there soon, MIDI board support, which is also fantastic because that is one of the examples, the MIDI board support, where the community had the motivation to add that to MobiFlight. And it's a 100% contribution by the community. And uh, just to give you some examples of what you... Oh, there's a question. Yeah, they typically work. Oh, the Hall effect. Sorry, yeah, I was saying I, I'm supposed to repeat the question. So the gentleman there was asking if also Hall effect sensors were supported, and that is uh, the, the case because they actually act like a potentiometer. They give you an analog reading, and that is what MobiFlight can evaluate. Great question. Yeah, next question. Feed, 
uh, like force feedback or uh, so the question is if we include haptic uh, uh, so no there is no real support in that sense for force feedback other uh, uh, only if you want to for example use mobifly to read the data from the sim make your own calculations and then feed it into some device that creates the vibration Okay, so this is such. Uh, th this is a short list of examples of what have what people build with MobiFlight, and I really like the set uh, that we're going through to show you the bandwidth of different things. So it can start simple. Many of us start with a light panel, light switch panel. Yeah, you see uh, APU. Then there's the light switches on the left hand side. So this is for an A320 type of aircraft. And one thing that stands out, because uh, th those are the LEDs, yeah? So MobiFlight does not only support inputs. The strength is really also in the outputs, which kind of makes it different from other solutions that allow you to create button boxes, because you have this opportunity to display data. Yeah, then this evolves into more advanced uh, setups, like this one, or also I, for myself, created a radio stack. Uh, so most of these things are then either cut out of acrylic or out of uh, or 3D printed because 3D printing is such a huge thing, then you can combine it with off-the-shelf products that other vendors are and you add to it your personal customized things. And then you can also see that in the community there's a lot of knowledge and this, is, this almost looks like the real thing, right? That is created by someone at home yeah? with, with home tools like what we have now, 3D printers and laser engravers and these kind of things. So it's amazing what people can do. And everyone, uh, like they, they really have the skills to build it and they don't need the skills to connect it because that's what MobiFly does for you, yeah? It's all figured out. You just have to connect wires or whatever, the switches, everything else is uh, figured out. And you might know him, Haley Mac, Carl. Who knows Carl? Oh my God. You don't know him. He's a great guy. He now he now lives in the UK. He has an awesome YouTube channel too. Like he had all he was my benchmark always like with 30 Arduinos connected at the same time for running his Boeing 737. Uh, yeah, and uh, MobiFlight connector tool that is basically the brain, yeah, where you define what shall happen when you for example use a dual encoder or you know you push a button you decide through the MobiFlight connector tool to which flight simulator you are connecting and uh, what shall happen when maybe data changes in the aircraft, in the sim, or when the user uh, interacts with the devices. I'm inviting everyone after you go home, you know, and you have the time, go to the MobiFlight.com website. Download is free. Just go there, check it out. It's really easy to get started. That's what also the seminars are going to show to the participants. Um, it is really, really easy. All you need is an Arduino. I have a, sp I have a prototyping board that I designed for the community, but <coughs> you don't necessarily need this. There's an Arduino, then you see there's a bunch of wires going to the devices and how you connect them, that's also up to you. I did it here with uh, special XHJST connectors, which makes it really nice and then you see there's an LCD display in there and a dual encoder. And this makes up a really nice multifunction radio where you can switch between pages. Like you can display COM1, COM2 frequencies, and then interact with this. Um, yeah, and then there was this, uh, let me take a look at the, at the time, awesome. And then there was this idea that uh, this time, um, or after, after attending online last time, I knew that this time it was gonna be possible for me to be here on site. So Moby Flight at FS Expo, that would be an awesome idea. That was always a dream to be here. And uh, I talked to Evan, and then we were both saying, well, offering workshops at the FS Expo to really let people experience how easy it is to get started with this home cockpit building. Because I know Evan, Evan, right? You're also always telling me, I don't know anything about cockpit building. I should probably <laughs> join one of those workshops. Yeah, so, um, and that's, that's uh, true for a lot of them. And one goal of the workshop for me is really to help you understand that it is so easy to get started and that you at the end of the workshop would say, 
it is really easy to get started. Yeah, Sebastian was right. So in the end, what you have to do is, um, it's not so much, yeah? You have to connect your hardware to the Arduino. You have to configure uh, through MobiFlight what the different devices shall do. And uh, eventually you will also want to learn how to design and build such uh, devices. So in this, in this case, for example, this is all 3D printed. It's obviously, it's a very generic device. I'm not trying to recreate something uh, uh, that, that resembles an original avionics uh, device, but it doesn't matter. It's your, your creativity and your skills are your limitation. Um, one of the challenges for the workshop was actually how to make sure that we can wire up everything because shall we bring a breadboard, shall we solder, and solder is kind of a problem in the setup because somebody could, somebody could get hurt or we could set the museum on fire or something. So we, and then I kind of, yeah, kind of opted for the XHJST um, connectors which are really easy to, let me put my microphone They're really easy to plug in and also uh, plug out again. And you they, you don't have to worry about polarity because they help you like find the right way. They only fit one way. <coughs> so that was one thing. And then for the designing and the building, the question was also how to do that because 3D printing takes a lot of time. And uh, when I prepared for the workshop, now I have the privilege to provide the workshop to 60 people. Uh, I had to create 60 kits and uh, I had like 27 days printing time, just like 24 seven printing, yeah? And uh, I realized that when I only had 15 days left <laughs> <laughs> before the event. So I had to go out and buy some more 3D printers <laughs> to pr do it in parallel, you know, like um, at the same time, so that was funny. And I was also wondering what, what should we b build here, you know? like people, when they build their own stuff, the, it, there's different types of um, home cockpit builders. One's those who are like more flying generic air aircraft. They're not looking for a very authentic style. They want something that works generically for a multitude of aircrafts. And then we have other builders that are more like, oh, I'm a Boeing 737, like, you know, I love those. And uh, I'm, I'm an Airbus fanboy, so it has to be as accurate as it gets, uh, down to the micromillimeter. Um, so yeah, I came up with this idea that I had in, like, on my mind for a long time. Uh, this is this cube system. And it's actually yeah, an idea that I had in mind for, for a longer time, which basically comes with base components and has different kind of covers, lids, uh, that you can, you know, take, you can, put, you can put them on and switch them out for something else. So I thought that would be a nice idea to also uh, allow people to design their own cover for it, their own uh, device. And um, yeah, I like the, the idea of the flexible arrangement. And uh, the MobiFlight prototyping board is then the last uh, piece of the puzzle that kind of helps, first of all, the Mega Pro Mini that I have here, the Arduino. I hope you can see it. It's very, f it's, it's half of a credit card size maybe, but it's a little microcontroller with up to 68 input and output pins. And um, the prototyping board that I designed just helps to make it really easy to connect your devices to it and experiment until you figure everything out. And then you can also like pull it off from the back and you can d uh, apply it in your own specific application. But I thought it's a great learning tool and it's gonna save us a lot of hassle now during the workshops because people that we don't have to spend time on soldering. And by the way, I soldered like 24,000 solder joints <laughs> when I put all these together by hand. Uh, it was a, a lot of time too. So it was not fun, but I'm really happy that I did it and I'm looking forward to the workshops. The prototyping board uh, comes with a predefined configuration. The devices that are connectable yeah, are already prepared. So that's another kind of makes it easier for the participants to uh, try MobiFlight out and get started. 
And uh, here's an example for the, the, the things how I typically design um, devices or objects that I want to apply in, the, uh, in my home cockpit. So I use Fusion 360. Does anyone know that application? Okay, cool. A couple of hands here in the, in the audience, like 10 or so. It's a great tool and it's also free to use. So it has a hobbyist license. It's actually a really powerful professional tool, but it has a hobbyist license. And uh, yeah, it allows you to create all these kind of things. So these are the different lids for the workshop. Sorry, uh, probably go back. So I have a single cube and a, and a double-sized cube. And then I have designed different lids, the one with the uh, dual switches, dual encoder. Then there's micro switches. Um, these are LED, special kind of push buttons and then an LCD display lid and a single encoder. And all these kind of tops, or however you want to call it, covers are used in the workshops. So it's going to be fun and very easy for everyone to assemble it and uh, have the feeling that they're building it themselves without having to spend time then on these time-consuming tasks like soldering. Absolutely, yeah, that's how I did it. Exactly, yeah. So I can also give you a peek into the program. So this is what it looks like. Um, I even, I'm able to, uh, oh, why can you not see it? It disconnected. Huh? Oh, that makes sense. I see. I have to move this over. Do do do. Thank you for the hint. Yeah, extended desktop. Um, so you can see that uh, it has this lid, and also what I imported is the actual PCB with the encoder on it and then you can design around it, and then it's 100% fitting, and then you can go here under utilities, and then under make, and you can take that and select the component that you would like to convert into an STL file, which you then can put into Cura, and or the slicer of your choice, and uh, convert it into a printable object, which is pretty cool. Thanks for the question. Oh, there's another question. Uh, can, you download the STL files from can you download the STL files from MobiFlight? Yes, you can. Um, I will, uh, so I, I kept it little kind of, you know, under the blanket still, since we have this exclusively now going on here during FS Weekend. But after the event, uh, this is all going to be available on GitHub. So you can go there and download it if you want to try. All right. Cool, so we just saw that when I toggled the visibility of the lid, we saw the PCB underneath, and uh, I'm using KiCad, which is another open source software, which is pretty amazing, because with KiCad, I can design stuff, and I have to also pull this on the other desktop. Uh, I hope you can see it. I didn't bring my mouse. Um, so this is the schematic. Very easy, because this is for the dual encoder. So there's a schematic for the dual encoder. There's uh, for the um, for the XHJST connectors, some mounting holes. And then you have also the option to lay it out. Hold on. I'm going to show you that, because that looks cool. Uh. Where's my mouse? Trackpad. Okay. There you go. And this is the layout version as PCB, like where all the components go. And then this is also a huge trend right now that we see on our Discord, is that we have discovered that it is really easy to manufacture PCBs. So first, it's a lot of fun to design those PCBs. And uh, second, it's really from a wiring perspective, it's so much cleaner, yeah, because 
you can run a lot of the wires that you would have to run through cables. You can just have like the traces there on the PCB and you can mount it nicely from behind of your panel and it has become so inexpensive and really fast turnaround time. So we are using a company called JLC PCB, which is one of the manufacturers who does this on demand. So I can export these files and drop it into their website and 10 days later I have it in the mail and they have manufactured it for me. And it's really not that expensive. The only downside is that you have to typically not only get one, but a couple of them. Uh, so you might end up with extra PCBs, but for example, our community, we then have a marketplace section on Discord and the people tell each other that they have some spare and they kind of, you know, they find someone who takes it. So yeah, that was a little uh, look behind the scenes, what I did to create this device. And I'm not really, you, you probably wonder what this really does. I kind of, it's hard to show since there is no zoom or uh, close up on the, on the thing. Or now he is actually doing it. Ugh. Okay, then let me quickly disconnect, connect and see if I have MobiFlight running. Are we on time? We're good on time, great. So this is MobiFlight. I also have to move it over to the other, to the other screen and then it's gonna be a little bit complicated for me to turn around. Um, so yeah, for example, here we have an output configuration and we have an LCD display here in the center. And I will show you real quick how that looks, how you configure something. Um, so let's say you would like to read the active COM1 frequency from the SIM and you would like to display it on the LCD display together with the standby frequency. So what you can do is first uh, you go into the SIM variable tab for this configuration. You decide what SIM you want to work with. So in this example, it's going to be the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We have a preset list filter that helps you to kind of reduce the number of matches that you're looking for. So this one says now Microsoft Generic Avionics and the preset is called COM Active Frequency where you can also pick the index. So one or two, depending on how many radios are installed in the particular, in the particular plane. In MobiFlight, everything that you read becomes available for you as a placeholder represented by the dollar sign. So I could enable the transform field and I could also modify the value after reading it, which I don't need to do uh, in this case. I don't have to compare it or do anything else with it, but I wanna display it. And uh, here I can select what board is currently that I wanna use for this configuration because MobiFlight supports that you have multiple Arduinos connected at the same time. And uh, in this case, I selected the LCD display type and the LCD one. And if I test this now, you should see, oops, hold on. It doesn't say anything, anything. That's not good. Did I not, I have to restart MobiFlight for a second. I didn't do that, I'm very sorry. I have to restart because I disconnected the board. Uh, give me a second. So here again, MobiFlight is starting. MobiFlight has started. MobiFlight has looked for all the connected boards. The display is now blank. And if I go back inside the configuration and if I hit the test button, here on the display tab, then you should see something happening. Cool. I'm not sure if you're capturing it there with the camera, but basically everything that we design, uh, that we con the, that we defined here, everything that we defined here has been displayed, and the dollar sign symbols have been replaced with an actual test value. And if I were to go and start flight sim, and if, when I hit the, the run button here, 
Right now it's showing me that the flight simulator is not running, but if it was, then I could actually um, read the value from here and it would now correctly display it. If you're interested in seeing this, I can obviously start the flight sim real quick, but it's gonna take a couple of minutes, as we all know, uh, to run. And uh, we still have like 10 minutes left in the slot, and I would also appreciate uh, you or invite you to ask questions if there are any questions. Yeah, so there's tutorials. Uh, do we have YouTube tutorials? Thank you, and documentation. <laughs> Thanks for waving in the back. I have to repeat the questions, I always forget. Uh, yeah, um, so as I already mentioned, there, uh, MobiFlight has a YouTube channel, and we have other community members like Captain Bob, or uh, Carl from Hillimac, or many others, and sorry that I don't shout out your name right now, but um, yeah, there's uh, many who are sharing their experiences Mobi with MobiFlight, and there is also on GitHub, we have uh, documentation that is maintained and created by the community members themselves, so it's very dynamic, and it's also um, always up to date, and on the website you have more generic documentation that points you to the different places. Great question. Anybody else? There. For someone who would be new to doing something like this, what are the challenges in getting started? So what are the challenges for somebody new who wants to get started with home cockpit building? I think that's an excellent question because I think first uh, to have an idea probably or to follow a tutorial is great because like the, the, the challenge would be that you're probably overwhelmed and you probably don't really know where to start yeah so what shall I build or, or something but typically people come to this point out of their own motivation where they say I would I'm, I'm tired of using the mouse whenever I want to interact with the light switches for example and then they start with that so mm, Without MobiFlight, it would definitely be the connection between the hardware and making something happen in the sim, which would be the challenge. And that kind of is taken away by MobiFlight. Other than that, maybe soldering skills, like some, some manual skills that you have to build up, which uh, they don't teach you at school. Yeah, the soldering or something like that, or 3D printing is also a lot of fun. Is there an in-depth programming guide uh, beyond what is on the website? That's uh, an interesting question because I'm not 100% sure uh, what kind of programming that uh, particular person has in mind. As a contributor of MobiFlight, probably there is not so much other than the source code itself and you can always reach out to us on the Discord. Uh, there's a developer channel. But um, if it refers to the configurations that you're putting together, um, MobiFlight really tries to keep like this programming or like what, what we know from SEOC from the old days or so, or Lua scripts, it really tries to keep that away from the user and make it very easy by using these uh, presets that the community has figured out. And if it is something related also to the codes of the actual presets, so, um, and then what I'm talking about is if you go and take a look here at the sim variable, uh, there it says show preset code, and there you can see that for, like, for me picking that I want to access com active frequency eventually is gonna be translated in this code snippet here, which is understood by the flight sim and this is taken from the Microsoft SDK. I hope that answers somehow the question. Yeah, there's the gentleman over there. So the question is if you have already some other kind of tool um, that is working with your hardware like Spadnext if MobiFlight was interfering with that, and that is uh, definitely not the case. 
So MobiFlight uses an exclusive way called the WASM module that comes that is installed automatically by MobiFlight into your flight simulator uh, installation. And I'm, we're using that channel to communicate uh, to the, uh, with, the, with the flight sim. Obviously, if you have an assignment that results in a conflict, because you say SPAD next shall set something and MobiFlight shall set something, then maybe you have like competing inputs, but that's not because of the programs, then it's more like how you define the logic, if that makes sense. Another question from the online chat. That is also an excellent question where somebody asks if it has to be some like special hardware that is compatible with MobiFlight. And I would absolutely say that's not the case because when I designed MobiFlight, I had in mind to be able to support all these off-the-shelf things that you can find on eBay, for example, like with encoders and uh, switches and all that stuff, everything that you find typically works. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a specific brand. Also for the Arduino boards, it's not only the Mega, we also have other Arduino board types supported. It don't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be the uh, original Arduino. It also works with the clones that are a little bit uh, less expensive, and in that regard, I would say MobiFlight, just try it and, and see, and if it doesn't work with your component, then reach out on the Discord and maybe we can figure it out why. Of often times it's the case that in the end it's an electronic like wiring issue or something, rather than the component itself or MobiFlight. Yeah, there. So the question is, if you have multiple Arduinos connected, how does MobiFlight take, uh, tr keep track? Um, so every Arduino board will get an, a serial number assigned, so they can even have the same names. But you can also go here in this menu and you can give, an, give the assign uh, like a specific name to the Arduino. Let's say the one is in the autopilot panel and the other one is in the radio stack. Then you would call it autopilot and radio and later on uh, where you are defining what shall happen or what shall be displayed, you have always this option to select which, which of the modules, which of the boards you would like to assign this configuration to. All right, another great question. So if you configure something, how does this actually make it down to the Arduino so that every, everything works in the end, right? That was the question. And um, so MobiFlight has two parts to it. There is a MobiFlight firmware that is uploaded to the Arduino. The moment when you plug in a fresh new Arduino and that is recognized by MobiFlight, it will auto-detect what kind of Arduino it is and it will offer you the option to convert it into a MobiFlight board. So you just hit a button and then it uploads the firmware to the board. And the firmware is prepared in such a way that you can, that it comes with all the capabilities, like the support for the different devices. And this, um, this tree that I just showed you, this one here in the MobiFlight modules uh, settings, this is the so-called the board configuration, the device configuration. This is uploaded to the board. So the board will always know what is connected to it, regardless to which computer or whatever it's connected. So that's information stored on the board so that it knows at pin five there is an LED, at pin six there is a button or something. And um, this configuration is shared with MobiFlight connector tool, which run runs on your desktop where your flight sim is running, and then it knows what kind of devices um, are connected to it, and it will later, when you put it in run mode, yeah, which is currently grayed out, oh, sorry, we are on, yeah. When, when, you, when you execute your configurations, MobiFlight will go through every configuration one by one, basically, evaluate it, and update, or, or send the message down to the Arduino. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Ah, yeah, the Arduino itself. So how is the Arduino connected? That's through one USB cable per Arduino. Yeah, so the entire data exchange between the Arduino and the computer goes through USB. Even if you have multiple ones? Even if you have multiple ones, and what you can do is you can have a USB hub, and then you have one cable running into the hub, and then you for, from there you can spread out. Do Arduinos need their own power supplies? That's <laughs> also a really good question because it depends. It depends what kind of devices uh, the Arduino has connected because some of them will require a certain amount of uh, uh, power. For example, an LCD display with the background, uh, back background lighting or the seven segment displays Yeah, that are LEDs also, it adds up uh, a little bit. So it's always good to have them connected to a powered USB hub or directly to your computer because then you are sure that you get like between 500 to 700 milliamps uh, and that um, typically covers quite, quite a lot. But you also always have the option to add external power supply if your device is really demanding like a servo motor or something like that. Two minutes left. Oh, yeah, so what's the simplest thing to build for your project to get started? And we call that, the, that's the parking brake tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the parking brake tutorial because there is gonna be a, a, an LED that indicates the state of your parking brake, whether it is set or not. And you have one button which you can toggle or you can set the, the position of the parking brake either to set or released and it's very simple, but it kind of covers both sides, the input side as well as the output side. And it really is the parking brake moment where people then start to realize how easy it is and they just take it from there and then they build more complex things of it. There's one more question over there. No, I was saying, I was saying I need that. Yeah, okay, and the parking brake tutorial is on the website. I'm not sure if you have a parking brake tutorial. I have a I have a new getting started tutorial just recently uploaded, which literally is a step by step guide to get you started. That that also tells you like the basic concepts and that you find your way around the Mobi flight very easily. So you definitely should uh, check that video out. It should be very helpful. Thank you. And there's one last question. Um, kind of, it is already, it's not released yet, but I'm really working on it. So, the, yeah, I'm, I'm really working on it. The question was if you can run it on a different computer over the network. It actually, yeah, so I'm working on it. It's going to be in the next release. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure being here, and thanks for your attention and all the great questions, and I hope you'll like uh, and enjoy the rest of the FS Expo. I bet it's gonna be awesome. <laughs>